you're listening to Dear Alice, a lifestyle approach to interior design. Hey, welcome to Dear Alice. Hi, Jess. Hey, girl. (laughs) Today we're talking about lighting. Any of you guys out there ever stumped about lighting? We have a question today, and um, I find that in the design work we do, a lot of people have questions about lighting, and it, it feels a little bit like a science to a lot of people, don't you find? Yeah, I think there's a lot of math, mm-hmm. and we do a lot of math, like just again, we use AutoCAD on our computers to like elevate a room, so we know exactly the heights of these things, and we tell our, our electricians to hang it at that height, but if you don't know that, like where do you start? Mm-hmm. Like how do you know how low to bring your chandelier from, you know, on your kitchen island or in an entry or in a huge family room. And I think those are the questions that we receive a lot. Yeah. And it ties back right into this question from, let's see, her name is Missy DP. What are the rules when hanging a light fixture? My family room is approximately 15 by 21 feet and the ceilings are about 19 feet high. What diameter should I go with and how high should the light fixture be hung? Thanks. Jess. What do you think? Sis? Yeah, so this is a double story room. So this is why it's a really good question. A lot of so you luxurious. out there might just have a single story room and that's an easy answer. Um, if you just have a single story, then we're going to say the bottom of the chandelier should hit anywhere between seven and eight feet. Um, that gives people plenty of clearance to be able to walk under it. But in a two story room, you're going to be looking around at what's happening up above Mm -hmm. in that story. Um, Sometimes you see a breezeway from the floor up above. And so it's going to have a relationship up in that atmosphere. Maybe you're going to have windows above the other windows. And so you could center it on that. So there's kind of relationships that we want to play to and want to center things up within that. One thing that I want to say We do do a lot of two-story great rooms these days. And in that case, we always um, look at the vendor and we order additional down rod or additional chain because the amount that it's going to come with is not going to be enough. So don't feel like just because your chandelier came with a certain amount of chain that that is the answer for the maximum height that you can hang that chandelier at. It (laughs) can always go lower. And so if you want to feel that more in your room, then you're going to want it to get even lower into the space. Let's say there's no windows in that room. So it being choked up high up against the two-story ceiling isn't going to do you any favors. You want to get that down a little bit lower. Um, But if you do have a lot of relationships, which I imagine everybody does, um, you might even have finish work or paneling or something like that that it would have a relationship with. So I hate to say it, um, Missy D, P, but the answer is going to be to really look at what else it's going to be connecting with. And there's not like an exact math or science that goes with that. It's just more of a visual relationship. In my opinion, I don't know. What do you think, Sue? Yeah, I think you want to always frame those things, whether that's in a window, the finish work, like you said, um, or if we just want it to have a real relationship with the furniture grouping. Mm -hmm. Again, really consider all those things when you're looking at it. And just, I think the biggest rule is don't choke it up too high. Mm -hmm. If you're going to spend the money on a chandelier, let's drop it. Let's see it Mm -hmm. and show it off. So get too much extra chain, get too much additional down rod so that you have room to play with it if you're not sure. And that way you have all the tools you'll need to make sure it's right when you install it. Yeah, that's great. One additional thing that we didn't touch on was the diameter of that chandelier. And again, like all things, we talked about this with rugs and with really with anything, we'll say go bigger. Mm -hmm. Let's go as big as you possibly can for that size of room. You're going to want to you're going to want to be upwards of like 40 inches diameter mm-hmm. at least. Yeah. And so really just try and stretch yourself because that's when you really feel it. If you have too small of a chandelier in a large room, it's just going to look. It's, like a kitchen it's, pendant it's, hanging in the middle of your two-story yeah. room. Bummer. <laughs> it, it's funny when you get <laughs> big rooms like that, it's like they absorb the design differently mm-hmm. than if it's a smaller room. So you think, oh my gosh, I bought this massive chandelier. It was so huge that I need somebody else to help me carry the box in the house. And somehow you get it in that room and it shrinks by two yeah. sizes. You know? That's crazy. Yeah, those big rooms really absorb design and product really quick. And yep. so you have to go bigger than you think. I remember we used to put, we had one from Curry and Company called the Lodestar Chandelier. Ah. Yes. Remember the Lodestar? That yeah. was the biggest chandelier that I feel like we could get our hands on from a design perspective. Was it, was it like 68 or 72? 
It was no, I think it was like 60 round. Okay. Yeah. It was a big girl. It was big, but there aren't a lot of really, really huge ones. But yeah, I would say for a room this size, 15 by 20, a four foot chandelier hanging two stories in the air, for sure you're going to want at least a 40 inch yeah. no, no diameter. Than that. Yeah. But and, go bigger if possible. And I think that that's a common mistake that we see when we go into most um, homes that we'll often go in with clients um, if they're buying an existing property. And it seems like in general, most homes, the lighting is too small in the room or they don't even hang chandeliers. There will be, or there will be the tiniest pendants you've ever seen hanging over the island, like those long skinny cylinders. And you're like, ah, what's, Again, bummer. what's this <laughs> chopsticks hanging in the air? <laughs> yeah. So it always feels good to get something a little larger, like um, a sphere shape or a cone shape just something that's really going to take up some of the atmosphere and be worth, you know, looking at. So I would say in general, like don't hang anything over your kitchen island that is going to be smaller than like, you know, 14, 16 inches in diameter. Go really big, depending on the size of, of your island. Today, mm -hmm. it seems like islands are generous enough. You're not just talking about like a little peninsula with a couple bar stools, you know, per, uh, perched up to it. Usually people have full blown kitchen islands today. Mm -hmm. So I think for sure you could take like a 14 to 16 inch diameter of something. At minimum. And they yeah. Can then go up to like, tw they even go 24 inches and, yeah. you know, or if you just like need one big thing or if, you know, just looking at the space, go bigger. It's sculpture hanging. Just like we said, a rug is the biggest piece of art. This mm -hmm. is sculpture hanging from your ceilings. So be opinionated about it. Really make it interesting and think about it before you phone it in and just grab this, you know, thing that your neighbor has. Yeah. Be considerate. Totally. And I think lighting is one of those um, things that makes a really big difference. If you do buy an existing home in the market, I'm sure that the builder or maybe the past homeowners haven't taken the time to really sit down and select fantastic lighting. So that's one of the quickest things you can do um, besides painting a room. Painting a room will be the least expensive thing you can do for the biggest impact. Bringing in lighting and the right jewelry into the room will make a massive difference. And it will all of a sudden make your home feel really high end, custom, you know, it'll feel like a custom build. It'll look more expensive when the jewelry is right. It's interesting too, because when we're working with builders, one of the things that we address initially is they'll have an allowance in their bill, their remodel mm -hmm. for lighting. And we always say, we feel like the lighting is part of the furniture mm -hmm. <laughs> because it's supposed to be opinionated. And so be considerate of that when you are building a new house or if you're remodeling and your builder's giving you some bids, um, you're probably going to want to up give your budget. An give them an example <laughs> of what, exactly. what a, a lighting bid would be oh. in a Okay. home and a home allowance from Thank a, you. from a builder. So a bid is what a builder, when you have a budget and you go and get your home loan, you have a cap number that you're trying to build this house or do this project for. And so the builder will take that and he'll divvy that up into what each category that will take to build your house will be. So framing will be an, an amount, lighting will be an amount, plumbing will be an amount. Um, and so he gives you these allowances and usually the builder will put an allowance for lighting you're going to probably want to to and, have a little bit more on that lighting budget. What are the budgets that we see for oh, lighting from builders? <sighs> seems I will like say it's, it'll be like usually less than 20. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, for less sure. than $20,000. And if you're building, we build really large homes out here in the West. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of space. And so anyway, for that amount, like you're not going to get a whole lot. Yeah. For, and that's usually just like the decorative lighting. I've so. even seen like $7,000 for an entire home for a lighting budget. And we're like, <laughs> oh, geez, what are we doing? Just cans everywhere? I know, yeah. just phoning it with the boob light. So yeah. so yeah, so on your lighting, just do some research and figure out what you love and start to do some calculations and make sure that you you budget for at least the most important spots, right? Mm -hmm. Or here's the so. thing, or just um, just do cans for now and invest in a few key spaces, like your master bedroom sconces. Like you can make that small budget, just go into a few key spaces and then just put caps on things until you have the budget to do lighting right. But just don't invest in the aluminum looking silvery tinny ones yeah. that your builder was thinking of when he put that budget together for you. Like really, really get lighting right. Yeah, don't spend mon dumb money on things that you know you're going to want to replace. Because often when we have something there, we don't, we kind of forget about it mm -hmm. when we start living in the space. But 
yeah, wait for the right thing and hang that. I have something to add on that, um, on the can lighting side of it. So I have a, like my living room before I remodeled it. It's like 13 feet by like 20 feet long, long rectangle room. I had can light. So one can in there. Um, my house is built in 59. They didn't like overhead lighting, I guess. One can. Can Can light. So, and it was like above, like where my sofa was. So I felt like I had a spotlight on me if I was like, Watching TV is stupid. You should keep that. I think that's hilarious. <laughs> it's a cool look. I already, I already, I already <laughs> took it out. But <laughs> cool ideas. Um, so anyway, I ended up putting like six cans in that space. Uh-huh. And game changer, first of all. Yeah. It felt like I was living, at nighttime, felt like I was living in a cave because like a little bit lower ceilings. But I learned that like can lights should be four to six feet away from the wall and four to six feet away from each other. So that's like a good, you know, rule of thumb if you're like putting in can lights to kind of, you know, go by. You know, obviously rooms are different sizes. So yeah, I learned that in my little research doing, uh, doing my remodel. I love that you brought that up. And on the subject of cans and as you're placing them, place them in a grid, line them up with each other. We'll go into a lot of homes that again, it wasn't. It seems like common sense, right guys? Yeah. It seems You'd like be you surprised. Just, it's crazy. And a lot of them, it just looks like pockmarks yeah. and like this random uh, weird constellation and nothing's lining up and there's nothing more offensive to the eye than looking up and seeing zero organization with your can lighting. And also when there's too many. You don't want too many can lights. Again, it's, I think there was an architect that we worked with once that called it acne for the ceiling, which I thought was really interesting. And so, yeah, use it, you know, I would say probably that six feet, Mm -hmm. I think is even better than the four feet, unless you're in like a a really concentrated, like your kitchen where you Mm -hmm. need a lot of light to prep food. That's when I would like go on the shorter side, but even then six feet is sufficient. So I will say on the opposite end of the spectrum, I way overlit my living room. I don't know what I was thinking. I think that the architect had put cans in. So the cans, you know, stayed in. And then I chose a semi flush mount pendant that actually has eight light bulbs in it for the middle of my living room, which is a really small room actually. Yeah. And then I also have sconces on the walls. And of course I have lamps because, you know, it up, Jessie. I'm a designer <laughs> and I only really think rooms are beautiful in the evening with all of the lamps on and maybe my fireplace on, but it's just a beautiful glow in there. And if you're having a conversation, you just kind of want it to be a little bit more gentle and, you know, pretty on the skin. You don't need it to be like bright light. Oh, also let me tell you, there are five windows in that room. So in the daytime, you don't need any lights on. Mm-hmm. Anyway, this room has, I, what I'm trying to say is I, there's no need for cans. It's like a casino in there. It, it's so many lights. It really is Las <laughs> Vegas. It's Las Vegas, Nevada <laughs> in that room. So I Aww. almost, I mean, I, I almost don't even have, I for sure don't have a need for cans in that space. Mm-hmm. If you know your chandeliers before um, you guys are obviously putting electrical in your home, you've already got your lighting chosen. You could decide if there's enough lumens to light up the space. And maybe there's some rooms you don't need cans in, you know, and where living rooms are all about ambiance. I think just a central fixture in lamps is plenty. So learn from my mistake. Yeah. And really the only time you ever put on cans is when you're about to clean or if you're doing like serious, like prep work for Thanksgiving or something. Mm -hmm. Most of the time you do just have your ambient. We always say that everybody and everything looks pretty under under lamplight. Mm-hmm. So that is something we tell all of our clients to do is just at night, just go on home. If you can put all your lamps on a switch, that'll be your best friend, mm-hmm. but just turn on all your lamps. It's a really lovely lifestyle mm-hmm. to just live like that. And everything looks so lovely, including you. So, yeah. And if you're not living with lamps, Ooh. <laughs> that's a game changer. Should I we know. talk about lamps? I love a lamp. lot. Do you know, a lot of times <laughs> we'll go into rooms and the only thing we see is upholstery. Yeah. There's a sofa, a chair, a love seat, maybe something in the middle of the room. There's no tables. Where are you setting your drink? And there's no lamps. So crazy, right? Yeah. yeah. So lamps are such a game changer for a room and having somewhere to put your drink or your yeah. cell phone, a table Side tables are really great too. They're like the accessories of the room and the lamps or the jewelry. So don't, don't forget to complete the outfit. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can go home at night and not turn on the overhead lights, but you can just turn on the lamps. I remember one rule of thumb I learned in school. They said that every seat should have a spot to set a drink and a spot to read by. So if everybody's watching a game or a movie, but you just need to catch up on some work or read a book, you just have a little reading light wherever you sit Mm -hmm. to read by without having to blow up the whole room with casino. 
Like, yeah. Right. Yeah. So and that's a good room. rule of thumb. <laughs> <laughs> Put it, put a tabletop surface and put, yeah, lamps so that everybody can just glow. Yeah. Beautiful. So let's talk about the size of lamps. Yeah. So, um, one of the questions (laughs) from, uh, Layla Mansur is, could you speak more to choosing the height of lamps in bedrooms? Okay. You'd mentioned tables, Mm -hmm. the tabletop height for a nightstand should be like no less than 28 inches. Mm -hmm on your actual tabletop. And like you can, we do chests Mm -hmm. that sometimes go up to like 36 inches, you know, depending on the height of your mattress. So make sure that the height of your tables is good. And usually if you buy a nightstand, it will be around that 28 to 30 inches. So, um, but your actual lamp, we don't ever go smaller than a 30 inch on a nightstand. Again, if you're lying in bed and you're going to be reading or doing some work, whatever, you want that cast to hit what you're looking at. Mm -hmm. So if it's too small of a lamp, it's going to basically highlight the hem of your sheet. Yeah. Or that's not fun. The surface of the (laughs) nightstand. Yeah. And, and it won't even be able to, the beams, the beam spread won't even be able to reach whatever you're doing. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, it's pretty and it's generous. Again, going back to that principle we taught you about rugs, where the bigger rug makes the room look bigger, mm-hmm. the bigger lamps make the room feel grander, taller, More prettier expensive. with your headboard. Your headboard is probably a little bit taller, unless maybe you're a mid-century household with a low one. But for the most part, it's going to cast pretty light on your um, on your headboard and just really pretty on you as a human it's just more beautiful to have a taller lamp. When uh, the junior designers first start with us and when we're just we're just starting to show them how we do things here at Alice Lane and what we look for mm-hmm. aesthetically, whenever they're working on a bedroom, I'll always give them that rule of thumb. Don't get a lamp that's any shorter than 30 inches for a nightstand. Yeah, and if you want to be dramatic, go bigger. And if you have a chest... Go large in there. It's really fun. And I think that's one thing that we love. A lot of people will say, should I do sconces so that I can keep my surface clean? Oh yeah, the swing arm lamp. A lot of people want to know if they should do that. Yeah, and I guess if you're really, really tidy and you have OCD and like, you know, Mm -hmm. that's really important to you. You need like an empty nightstand with nothing on it. Which we've had clients that have requested that and we'll do that for them. Um, But we feel it's kind of a disadvantage because again, the lamp is sculpture. Yeah. And it's just so beautiful on the nightstand and it's a figure that sits there and has a profile. And so we would always go lamp over a sconce next to your bedside. Mm -hmm. It kind of completes the headboard too. Don't Mm -hmm. you feel like it's in concert with the headboard on that wall? It's just like a friend, a sculptural shape next, because usually headboards are, you know, they're straight up and down in some way, even Mm -hmm. if they're tufted, the edges of them are usually quite straight. And so we can get these sculptural objects on both sides of the nightstand. It sort of completes Mm -hmm. the look. Totally. So I love that. It kind of graduates the heights down. So you go highest is your headboard and you graduate to the height of your lamp and you graduate to the height of your table. And we'll do that in any setting. We always like that graduation. We're never going to have just like a stark drop from something really tall all the way to the finished floor. Yeah. You're always going to nest things just so that, again, it's pleasing to the eye to have groupings and have that graduation of height. Mm-hmm. So consider that too. know the height of your headboard before and like know the height of your nightstand as you're looking at your lamp for yeah. your bedside. If you are, um, if you're working on getting lamps for your um, space or just furnishing any rooms in your house right now, if that's something that you're working on, then I would say buy a little tape measure for your purse if you don't already have one. The little ribbon kind are really great. I always keep one in my purse. And if you go shopping places for lamps, just always um, stretch that out and measure it. Usually if you're going to really be excited about the price of a lamp, it's probably like 20 inches high or something Mm -hmm. like that. And I don't want you to get stumped, you know, in a store just being like, oh, this looks really big on this small shelf. (laughs) This is what I need for my bedside table, you know? So yeah, keep that magic number, the 30 inches in your mind as you're shopping and just always keep a little tape measure on you. So talking about the other side of scale, like when would you use, like one of my favorite lamps is that small, like Baby Kelly with Kelly or someone. Uh When would would you use that? Yeah, that's appropriate. That is a fantastic trick at Alice Lane. We love the baby lamp. Uh, We, I actually have one on my kitchen shelf, my floating shelf. So great. It really illuminates. Um, it's fun to have it in a kitchen or in a little secretary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have a couple cookbooks stacked up on a shelf next to all my white dishes and this little baby lamp. I don't even know. It's probably like eight inches tall. Mm. 
it just is snuggled in there. Mine's antique bronze and it just snuggles in there. It's by uh, Thomas Mm O'Brien and it's sort of a little round ball that has a tiny little lampshade on it and it just glows. And I actually leave mine on all night, like a nightlight in the kitchen. So it's the cutest. If we do have to get up in the middle of the night, we don't have to turn on a bright light to, you know, stumble around and find the the Tylenol or whatever, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's just really, really charming. Or, or I can just have my overhead pendants on in the kitchen and that little baby lamp. And no matter what, people are just drawn to it and think it's such a magic trick. Because the mood's great. It's crazy how much credit you'll get for it. And also I find that adults love tiny things. Yeah. I don't know what it is about tiny things, but they're just such intriguing little objects. They're adorable we love them. I would also use We're just big kids. We, we like are little big things kids. and we like to feel special. And so just little small things, it just yeah. takes us back. Makes us feel bigger. Yes, exactly. There oh, it makes, is. Yeah. makes us yeah. feel bigger. That's what yeah. we want as women, like don't we? Giant we are. Yeah. I like to feel bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Me I, and think, baby lamb. I think on, on a shelf mm. is yeah. really cute too. In a powder bath on a shelf. The cutest adorable or, or even like sometimes even like on a chest if you like have a stack of books and you like uh-huh. just place that on top again it's just like this sweet little just a little exclamation point up there just like yeah. saying it's there and again it's a play on scale not interesting that we like really grand or we like a little baby but all that a lot of the middle ground like uh-huh. we're not usually one to spec yeah what do you do so, with that middle stuff but yeah the know. baby is so cute powder bath or even um we did one in like a etager in a bathroom with what's white an etager, towels Jess? oh yeah good okay you guys i have to tell you the funniest thing about the etager <laughs> so um i used to think it was called etagere Ooh. yeah <laughs> call it etagere everyone potato potato <laughs> Um, my mother-in-law corrected me and was like, it's not etagere, it's etagere. So everybody learn from my mistake and don't have anybody correct you ever. Um, anyway. Episcopal is not episcopal. That was my, <laughs> that's my blooper of the day. Uh, yeah, it's a French oh. term. What it is, is it's an open shelf. Usually it's a narrow, tall, open shelf. It's open on all four sides. So it's just... Um, just kind of an Eiffel Tower of a thing. I don't know. It's got shelving in between and it's open display on all the sides. And uh, we'll use them in powder baths, in bathrooms, like living rooms, maybe near a piano or something. It adds height and then you can put a little bit of collection on each shelf, but it's not so big as to be called a bookshelf. No. It's the etagere. It's more fun to say. Yeah. Etagere. <laughs> etagere. <laughs> anyway. We're going to start something. <laughs> yeah, but like you could keep your, like all your piano books or something. Mm. You know what I mean? Or stack um, towels in your bathroom and have yeah, a cute tray of and all like your candles or soaps. All and your things. perfume, bottles of perfume look Gorgeous. darling on, a, mm-hmm. on an etagere. Um, anyway, little baby lamp with your bottles of perfume. So cute. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Put a little light by all those glass bottles. That's magic. Yeah. Thanks, Corey. We love the baby baby lamp. lamp. Of course. It's a good one. Baby lamp. Yeah. So good. Finishes. What is, what do we love? Trending? What's classic? If somebody's nervous, I find that people say to us, I like mixed metals, but I don't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't want my house to go out of style because everything, you know, I'm going to buy, I really want it to stick around course you do. You know, you don't want to have to keep replacing your lighting or replacing, you know, all your things. So in lighting, what finishes, what finishes are are great. And really fast, just on mixing metals. We always say like when somebody phones it in with satin nickel, it looks like you're in a starter home because like a couple's first home, they don't know what they're doing. They're going to be like, we'll just do satin nickel because that's what the builder put in. And we'll just do satin nickel mm-hmm. all the way through on everything. And everything has to be satin nickel. Yeah. And it starts to look and it really won't show flat. fingerprints. It won't show it's fingerprints. very practical. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, boring. Yeah. Um, we yeah. love to mix metals. And if you look, I don't know, I think it's, I can't remember how old I was, but I remember when I saw like a really, really classy, lovely older lady. Mm-hmm. And she had all this like different types of jewelry and different types of metal that she was wearing. And I was like, that is successful. <laughs> like it it was just so beautiful. And then when you go into a home that's really mature and lovely and is like seen, you know, pieces from all over the world, you know, there's mixed metals, there's everything happening in there and they play off of each other and uh, they highlight one another. And so we are always ones to mix metals. It's like, um, you know, good jewelry 
it's great in your house and it's good for that traveled look. So mixing metals, we're all for. If you, here's the yeah. thing, if you don't like brass and you're like, I'm just, I've never liked gold. I'm never going to like it. You're going to go with polished nickel. Yeah. If you, if you want to be in the silver family, polished nickel is, it's a little bit, it's got a little bit more depth mm-hmm. and it's a little bit, um, I don't know, it looks more expensive than your yeah. brushed nickel. It's darker. Yeah. It's warmer. It's still nickel. It's but not the same as chrome. Yeah. Chrome is shiny silver. Oh yeah. Polished it, nickel is shiny silver, but nickel chrome is just is, warm. Yeah. Chrome is cold. It's got yeah. a cold looking finish to it. It's bluer. Mm-hmm. And then the um, and polished nickel. that'll usually nickel. be the, the least expensive. If yes. you're looking at like plumbing or anything, chrome's yeah. always going to be your least expensive. Polished nickel is going to be a little bit more than that. But it's if, you've can, if you can, go with the polished nickel. Mm-hmm. In both lighting and in plumbing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you're a silver person, polished nickel is going to be your metal. If you like the brasses, they are still trending for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the unlacquered brasses are really special. because unlacquered brass? An unlacquered brass, just um, like it sounds, they don't lacquer it. So it's not going to stay the same brass forever. Mm -hmm. It's going to be, it's a living finish. So it's going to continue to change and darken and age. And it just really looks like old French, old money, like it's been in the family forever. Yeah. So it's pretty special. A lot of companies also just like say it's just like an antique brass. Mm-hmm. So if you yeah. see something with that finish, go towards that. Mm-hmm. Just because again, it'll just have a little bit more depth. Yeah. And a little bit more patina. Those Like those young mm-hmm. new golds kind of look a little bit Z gallery and sometimes yeah. they're just a little too no yellow. Offense. What'd you say? <laughs> I'm like, no offense, gallery. <laughs> oh yeah. No, gorge, gorgeous work. I, I think that, um, we just, we just want to be careful to, um, be more authentic yeah. when we're choosing brasses just to Amen. keep it from looking, um, um, like it's trendy. Yeah. Yeah. I think another That's trendy lighting thing is too, is acrylic, which also it's kind of a Z gallery move. Yeah. Um, no offense. <laughs> <laughs> no offense. Anyway, but acrylic, um, you don't want too much of it. I know that everybody's like loving it, but you might have like a little end table that has an accent of it or like one lamp or maybe you have crystal instead. Um, but yeah, acrylic, I feel like is, is trending mm-hmm. and we're seeing a lot of it in like tables and chairs and all those things. But I feel like yeah, it's not going to be long lasting. So maybe don't do too, too much of it in your lighting or too much of it in one space. Yeah. I, I feel like too much of any one thing just gets like fatiguing to your eye. I mean, like I, I go into houses where everything is the same finish. It's yeah. like, you know, the doorknobs, the, yeah. the you know, the hardware. It's just like, too sucks much. to look at. Yeah. It just loses yeah. its yeah. specialness. Sucks too. to look at sucks people. Look at. That's the quote of the day. <laughs> it does suck to look at Corey. You're Amen. right. No, I would say like, <clears throat> just avoid that shiny gold altogether. That's not going to be your friend long-term. You're no. just going to stick with brass. And if it's antique brass or unlacquered brass, that's going to have staying power. And it's going to look like it's been in the family for generations yeah. and it's going to have an authenticity. So I always think authenticity is really great. Um, a lot of people do black um, or bronze, and that's for that more industrial look. I think your bronzes are always going to look more expensive than just a matte black. Yeah. So yeah. for us, we would avoid the matte black lighting and go for something more bronzed. Mm-hmm. And some fixtures with bronze, uh, Thomas O'Brien has a lot, uh, are bronze with antique brass. And that mixture of metals looks really amazing because then you see the different steps from like different heights and arms to like little brass knuckles. Yeah, and, like, you just get little all the connections really and different great. steps and highlights when there's two tones of bronze and brass together. I think that's beautiful. So in general, we'd say bronze, a brass of some, some sort or a black into nickel. Mm-hmm. I will say kind of one that you don't see a lot, but in plumbing that is beautiful. I actually went with the blackened nickel instead of a polished nickel Mm -hmm. for my kitchen sink. And I have loved that. It's really beautiful. It's, it's still a nickel. It's just got a lot more depth to it than just polished nickel. And it just, it feels really, um, it's kind of moody and still shiny yeah. and it's beautiful with my slabs. So if you do have an opportunity to use blackened nickel in your plumbing, it's pretty foxy. Yeah. And I think any, like throughout the house, we always love things that we're like, we're not used to seeing again yeah. with that fatigue. You were talking about Corey. We saw some blackened nickel floor lamps, which I hadn't really seen from some mm-hmm. of our vendors at market. And I was like, what is this? This is so beautiful. Cause I'm not used to seeing that finish on that floor lamp. So it immediately becomes something really interesting and special. 
So if you ever see something that you haven't seen before that you're just being drawn to, mm-hmm. there's a reason. It's because it's special and you should grab it. Yeah, agree. have your tape measure. Oh, <laughs> one of the things that um, we were talking to Ray Booth at Market yeah. um, with his uh, new introduction through Hickory Chair, and he had the most beautiful colors in this first entry scene that you came into. And it was kind of a sort of a lavendery, um, bluish purpley, plummy tone. And yeah, then like it wasn't icy. It was just, yeah, it was warm and lovely. Perfect, and he paired it like with navy. Yeah. And I said to him, how do you describe that? What is that color? And he said, I think the best things in life you can't describe. And so yeah. I think that goes back to what you're saying, Sue, mm-hmm. that if you see a finish that you haven't ever seen before, you can't really put your finger on it. That's probably one of the best things in life and you should buy it Mm because it's, it's undescribable and it will add magic to your room because nobody else has had it. You've never seen it. They've never seen it. It's just a rare butterfly of a thing. Yeah. People, you'll find people going up and petting it and being like, what on earth? Yeah. Where did you get it? Tell us the story. You're so sophisticated. (laughs) You're so fancy. You know everything (laughs) I can tell. Yeah. This adds to your mystique. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. Because that's what we want in yeah. life. We all just want to be more mysterious, exactly. don't we? Who are your favorite lighting designers? Oh, I I hate to sound like like I don't have a lot of um, exposure to things, but I just really love Thomas O'Brien. Yeah. I just always have. Mm-hmm. Um, he he has like a real historical reference. He's like a vintage, modern. Mm-hmm. I love men designers. I do. There's a lot of strength in their work. And Thomas loves that vintage modern look Mm -hmm. and there's like an an older class to it um but there's always like something new about it it's not like too curly or curvy there will be something straight about it that keeps it clean Mm -hmm. um but he does a really good job with his materials his shapes Mm -hmm. his scale i think i feel like thomas was the first to do the baby lamp that i had ever seen yeah so he takes these risks that are like it's like it's always been a classic. He yeah. introduces something in your mind that you're like, of course, that's, that's always been a forever. classic. I yeah. just really trust his thinking a lot. And so I love wandering through his section um, when we're at Visual Comfort. Mm-hmm. I think we're all enamored by Kelly Wurstler right now. Mm-hmm. It's fun to see a female designer coming out with so much edge and strength and fearless design. Mm-hmm. She does things that feel like they arrived here on a spaceship. Like, (laughs) where did you get this idea? I could fall over right now and I want to use it in every project now because it's going to make your work look so designer and Mm -hmm. so out there, but interesting and collected in every way. And no matter what collection she's done, it's like bulletproof. Win. It's a win and win every time. Yeah. Yeah. She's fantastic. If you guys don't already follow them, uh, for sure, Kelly on Instagram. Kelly Wurstler. Yeah, you should. I don't know if Thomas O'Brien's on Instagram. He's, I'm sure he is. He's for just people, a cool his cat. people are on Instagram. Yeah, I don't know. He's almost too cool for school, yeah. you know? Yeah, he's yeah. really great. He's such a good yeah. style. Kelly's great. We'll talk about space planning another day, but We've, he's king of like brilliant space oh, planning. Oh, jeez. He has yeah. such crushes on his space planning. We should planning. talk about space planning. That's a good one, Corey. Yeah. Noted. Okay. Um, Noted. But I think another one, actually, um, it made me want to build a new house when I was walking through and discovered the lighting of Julie Nell. Yeah. Um, her collection through Visual Comfort was like plaster finishes white and gloppy and organic forms with like leaves and long, long stems. And it was so beautiful that I was like, I just need to build a house around this stuff. That, that lighting gave me an itch that I haven't had in a long time. It was really great. I don't know. What are your faves? Yeah. Joey's going to say Julie now. Yeah. I just love anything. Again, when you're thinking about a room and just you have four straight, you know, you have a box, yeah, you know, with a lid on it and there's something just so organic about it that it's just crawling. Like it just started growing. And then, mm-hmm. you know, I just millions of years ago, I put plaster on it and, <laughs> yeah. and that's what Julie now does. And it's just so beautiful and her golds are beautiful and there's just nothing symmetrical mm-hmm. about any of her pieces. Everything just has a little bit more organic shape. So I'd probably say, yeah, she's on my top right now. Yeah. And of course, yeah. TOB is really easy to place almost in any environment. I've never met somebody that doesn't like his stuff. Yeah. He's a really like, he gets along with every, every style. Yeah. I feel like. I think Erin Lauder is kind of a, yeah. she's kind of got a cult she, following right now. She does. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of uh, design clients we get request mm-hmm. to use Erin Lauder's pieces. She's and she so kind successful. of spans the gamut. Yeah. Her Who's look. Erin Lauder? Erin Lauder is Estee Lauder's mm-hmm. granddaughter. That sounded like I just said a poem. 
<laughs> Aaron did. Lauder is Estee Lauder's granddaughter. Yeah. <laughs> Lauder daughter. <laughs> yeah, there's about, a real sophistication to her stuff. Yeah, it's there really, really is. There's a vintage quality, yeah. a glamorous quality. Mm-hmm. It feels like an old New York town home. Mm-hmm. Like you could have five brownstones lined up in a row and do everyone a different style, but use Aaron Lauder for all five of them. You know, you know, and there's enough to really have a completely you might different start look. drinking if you surround yourself too much with Aaron. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's, it's so good. It's really, wow. really beautiful. Vintage forms, beautiful colors, really interesting work. Um, she's a favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Maybe let's wrap up with like things not to do. So Jess, like what are your, like, don't do these things in lighting. Well, I, I, the only one I can think of right now is the one Sue said earlier. So I'm going to let her say it because it's so funny. She deserves the credit for it. <laughs> the boob well, light. You, yeah. Well, you said the boob light. So everybody, everyone knows what the boob light is, right? It's yeah. the flush mount, which is the one that goes all the way up to your ceiling. We're not being little, perverts. You all know little, what it is. The weird little nipple thing at the bottom. It's weird. And like mm-hmm. they make everyone uncomfortable. It's the half, so. it's the half dome <laughs> with a nipple on the bottom. Yeah. And it's what every, like if... You just go into a generic house. There's like a million of them, too many boob lights and there shouldn't be any. Um, But I think the worst offender is when you have a vaulted ceiling. So you don't have a flat ceiling, you have all these vaults. And when people put the boob light at an angle, oh man, there's nothing that gets under my skin. Mm. (laughs) Like an angled boob light. Like if you offend me once, whatever, offend me twice. That's, I'm I'm so over it. Yeah. Yeah. So what you would do in that case, if you have an entry and there's a vaulted ceiling and there's actually vault adapters that you can get for lights that go onto not the ceiling. Not boob lights, though. Not boob lights, You no. should not adapt your boob lights. Never adapt You should the boob just light. throw them away. Yeah, get a chandelier or a semi-flush mount is what they're called. A flush mount is what goes all the way up to the ceiling, just sticks up there like, like a connects, sticker. Yeah, it connects to the ceiling. But a semi-flush is when you're going to have some chain or, or a down extension, rod. a down rod, mm-hmm. that's going to bring it so that your actual light stays level with your flooring, with yeah, plane, right? Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, just do yourself a flavor. Just don't do that. It's going to be embarrassing. You don't want to, you don't want to have to go through that. Yeah. So that's probably one thing I would avoid. Another one that you said, Jess, was scale. We kind of mentioned it a little bit on kitchen. I think that's something just to touch on again. It's just the scale of your lights and great rooms, kitchens, wherever you're at, just go bigger. Yeah. That's usually. Make it count. Yeah. Make it count. Be considerate. And think about like what else is in the room. Like if you have lighting. The, you know, like I think along with the poop light is if you go into a home that maybe a builder just built, you yeah. know, he chose all the finishes and you're walking in for the first time and you're like, I think it's good. It's got nice bones. Usually <laughs> if the builder chose finishes, he's chosen um, really skinny, long pendants that hang over the island. And sometimes they have blue glass Ooh, and it's like an LED light bulb. Super I'll cool. tell you what makes me <laughs> mad in light lighting is LED light bulbs. It looks like an Ooh, alien yeah. moved into the house. Yeah. And when the lights Other. are on at night, they're like blue, like a bluish cast to the white. And that's what's coming out of your home. It's like an interrogation room. It's like, yeah, I'm about to be questioned like for a murder room full in a of, blue light. A room full of digital clocks <laughs> is lighting the room. It's the worst. It's the worst. You drive oh, by and you're shoot. like, they don't know <laughs> that they probably don't look beautiful in their own homes. No, they come across the light to our doorways when I see oh, those glowing from the windows. Oh. It's so bad. We all know how <laughs> awful we look in public restrooms. <sighs> Imagine if you looked like that in your whole house. Fluorescent lighting is blue, guys. That makes you look terrible. Yeah. Terrible, terrible. Well, and LEDs at yeah. the wrong temperature, right? Yeah, exactly. Those are terrible. Pay attention to that. Yeah, for sure. We called our electrician before we um, started recording and we asked him temperature for the light bulbs that uh, we're all using today because um, we are all lighting more responsibly mm-hmm. and can't just use incandescent light bulbs, which I love and should hoard because <laughs> <laughs> I look better in those. But he said, you're going to want to use anything from 2,700 to 5,000 um, Kelvin. And if you can get a dimmer on your, uh, your chandeliers. Yeah. Yeah. That that's really nice, especially in your bedroom. Mm-hmm. You want to get a dimmer in case you're like watching TV at night or wanting to knit in the soft light while you lay in bed. <laughs> Sounds nice. <laughs> <laughs> it does sound nice. <laughs> anyway, the warmer you can get those bulbs, if you yeah. go into a Home Depot or wherever you buy your bulbs, ask for the warmest. And the closer that you inch to that 5,000 mark, you're going to get a lot warmer. And that's going to be prettier with your paint, prettier on your skin, your hair is going to glow like a baby angel. Lucky you. It's going <laughs> to be the best. Let's all be beautiful in our lighting, everyone. Okay. Shall everyone, we? Let's, let's. Yeah. 
Oh. Let's not let the, the aliens take over our homes oh. with too cool of lights. Can we talk about one more thing? Yeah. On speaking of looking like an alien, isn't mm-hmm. it a bummer when you're doing your makeup in your bathroom, in your mirror, and there's an a overhead light. So there's just, that means there's just one light sitting on top of the mirror. Yeah. And it's just down lighting. And so it puts all the shadows and it just makes you look mm-hmm. not as lovely as you really are. Your eyebrows so, are casting shadows I onto know. your light, onto your eyeballs. And you don't Your realize. nose is casting shadows onto <laughs> your lips. You have Halloween face. And you don't realize about, you don't see all the different things that you need to pluck until no. you get into your car yeah. with that natural light. And then you're like, my eyebrows look like this. I know. No one told me. This is so embarrassing. Yeah. So uh, let's what, put sconces yes. on both sides of the mirror. I know it's going to be more expensive because instead of buying one light to go over the mirror, you're buying two, one to go on each side, but that's going to light up your face like a Kardashian. And that ladies and gentlemen is what we really want. Yeah. We want, we want to be able to see our faces when we get ready. Yep. Yeah. Pro tip. You're welcome. Thanks Sue. Yeah, girl. Yeah. Well, that wraps up lighting today. I hope that in some way, on some level, we answered some <laughs> questions for you. A um, lot of fun. It's super important in design to get the right lights, get the right finish, get the right size, and hang them at the right height. So anyway, good luck to you. Let us know if you have any more questions. Thanks for tuning in, and we will see you next week. Hey, thanks for listening. If you like our show, please leave a five-star rating. 